Blog Talk Radio. Hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Jeffrey Sumaganda of Action Wealth Systems. Today we have a very special guest, and we're going to talk about one of the most important topics in business, networking. Why so important? Why so critical in today's business uh, world? But why is this? I remember this quote um, that your network is equivalent to your net worth, and I thought, yeah, that's actually very interesting. So I thought the best person to talk about this subject is somebody which I've been researching on. Uh, I get I got to know him a little bit on, online, uh, networking, and I thought, well, you know what, it, it would be one of the best people to talk about this particular subject. Uh, let me just make sure I pull up this uh, particular um, uh, record and I make sure I've got everything right. So I'm ready. If John is ready, I'm going to introduce you to him. He will tell you a little bit about himself. And then we'll go from there and ask me a few questions. And uh, for those who are listening, uh, because of this call, the bit is going to be very short. Uh, I will le- allow you to ask any questions you might have. You can go into the chat room. Uh, if there's, there's any questions you want to ask John, please uh, get back and uh, let me know, and I'll be able to put forward to him. So let me first of all check if John is online. John, are you there? I am here. Okay, fantastic. John. Tell us a little bit about yourself, what your company does, but most importantly, where are you calling from? Where are you right now? Well, thank you for having me this morning, Jeffrey. And you know, networking is definitely one of uh, my favorite topics to talk about. It's yes. uh, something that I am passionate about. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I'm reaching you today from Chicago, Illinois, the Windy City. A wonderful place. I've been here about nine years. and. Right. Six of the last nine years I've spent in corporate human resources and more specifically recruiting in a myriad of industries and functions. My specialties within HR and recruiting have been more specifically uh, within campus recruiting and diversity recruitment and diversity strategy. Right. In that time, Jeffrey, I've seen a lot of people come in to um, interview, and while they may be very good, uh, talents and have very strong skill sets for any job, Yeah, th- they're simply not comfortable interviewing. They're poor interviewing skills. Right. On the other side, you know, we're all in unprecedented uh, economic climate right now that many of us have never seen. Absolutely. More specifically, the job market, and that's where the networking side comes in. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, the days of sitting at home and applying to jobs online um, aren't going to work. No, no. Today, with the resources available online yeah. and with the organizations, professional organizations, it is possible to network your way into every job that you're applying to. Yeah, but it's, it's not really one of the biggest challenges today. There's so much information that does exist online, and, and some of it sometimes is confusing. Now, what, how would somebody, you know, let's talk about somebody looking for a good job, looking for, for a job. What would you suggest as the best way for them to start networking? Well, to begin, um, you know, self-awareness of themselves and the skill sets that they bring um, to a networking relationship because a lot of people think that networking is about them. They need to accomplish their goals of getting a job through networking, which is good, but a self-awareness of what they can do to help others first. Right. But the next step would be to obviously pinpoint uh, several companies that they would be interested in applying to and from there to set up action plans and strategic plans to meet employees at that company and develop genuine, mutually beneficial networking relationships with these internal employees at the target companies so then they can be then referred into the jobs. Because the best thing a hiring manager can have is, you know, an internal employee walking up yeah. and handing the, someone else's resume to the hiring manager and saying, this is a credible professional mm-hmm. and a high performer. Um, consider this person for the job. And what that does is that reduces the risk that the hiring manager takes every time they extend an offer. Right. And so it gives the hiring manager peace of mind. Okay, okay. Now, you you also have been involved in a lot of uh, recruitment in terms of uh, the the younger uh, generation, the younger people, people come out of university um, and trying to look into um, the, the area of uh, looking for jobs. Now, tell us more, What what how do 
we have listeners from from uh, from universities. Uh, we have a youth program. We have five thousand um, students within this program, and some of them will be listening to this to this uh, to this interview. What would you suggest are their best option to 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 get into the, the the job market? Yes, you're absolutely right that you need to know what you bring to the table in terms of networking. But let's just go back, put networking aside, because just touch on something which I think is very critical. How does the young person really uh, come at uni looking for uh, an opportunity? How do they go about, you know, getting themselves into a position of of uh, being able to be looked at, you know, in the job market? Mm -hmm. I think the first thing is to start early. Yeah. By the time someone gradu graduates from the university, they need to have potentially two to three internships and a strong resume in terms of grade point average, um, some leadership positions within different student organizations. Uh, but again, the internships are critical because it will get it will show the employer that. You have tried different areas and that you have a sense of what they're interested in and then are now in a position to uh, pursue what you're interested in. And the leadership positions within professional organizations or student organizations from the university level um, demonstrate to the employer that you can um, not only manage people and lead people within the organizations, but that, that you can uh, manage conflict and deal with ambiguity in difficult situations because there's a lot of those uh, organizational positions on within student organizations on campus um, are challenging. Right. But very seldom are they are the skills and experiences that have been extracted from those experiences effectively communicated on resumes. Right. Now that's that's actually interesting when you say they need to start early. Um, majority of students they don't really think about it like that. They think they'll start looking for a job once they come out of, you know, uh, out of university. Um, you basically, you saying they should start very, very early. Now, let's imagine there's not enough, um, you know, opportunities within the university to, to basically advance your skills. You know, could you volunteer in organizations, local organizations, companies that you can try to get th those kind of uh, um, experience? Is that something you would, we, you would recommend people do? Certainly. And I think even even in this economic climate, there's more opportunities to do that because there's more more and more small businesses emerging day to day, and a lot of these small businesses are in need of help and would be willing to take on free talent right um, in exchange for giving them quality business experience. Now, I, I, in our youth program, one of the things that drives me crazy, I you find these young people, um, you know, I mean, this is not just young people, majority of people, they say, I need someone to give me a job. And, and then you wonder, you know, what do you mean you need someone to give you a job? You know, how do they know that you can deliver, you can do what you have, you, you can do? Why don't you get out there and volunteer and, and let them see what you can do? Make yourself very valuable to that company. The chances are they have no choice but to give you a job. But, but I'm glad you touched on that. Now, that's for the job environment. Let's go on to talk about um, how important is uh, the concept of, of networking for businesses, for small business. You know, why is it so important in today's business world? I think the, the obvious benefit for small businesses to get out there and, and for small business owners to get out and network is to expand their business and find sources of um, revenue generation and most importantly, to build their brand. Because as you well know, it takes quite some time for a small business to get up and running and um, profitable. Yeah. But networking is a great way to expand the presence of a small business yeah. and uh, reach potential sources of revenue um, for the business, especially through technology nowadays. You can build, you can build a business um, through effectively um, positioning a website with the right meta tags, Right. Through a Facebook presence, Absolutely. Like twittering, uh, I believe the the term is tweeting now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Facebook as well. I mean, you can create a tremendous brand presence through just internet working alone. Internet yeah. networking alone. Yes. Yes. Now, somebody, you know, is some time ago. I mean, even though I've been uh, uh, teaching and doing this for a long time, but I never took um, social networks uh, that very seriously until. Um, uh, I think about six months ago, really, to be honest with you, I thought, you know what, 
maybe it's about um, I, I look into it. I was so busy doing what I'm doing. I think, what do I need this, this stuff for? But demand of uh, uh, leads and demand of uh, relationship I've created through these social networks. This is actually I got to find you. Actually, um, uh, it's been phenomenal. So what what what? How do um, how do a small business you know uh, get started? Let's give them a few points on on how. Let's take these social networks. I mean, which one do you think is better than the other, and which one should people should not ignore? Um, and uh, and what's the best way to go about this? You know, Facebook is more for social than business networking, but yeah. the volume of professionals on there um, in itself is is too big for too big to deny. Right. MySpace, you know, forget about MySpace. Okay. That's one that you don't really need to pay attention to. Right. As a small business owner, I've focused most of my efforts through Facebook okay. and LinkedIn. And the power of LinkedIn because its ability um, to connect to to connect you with other professionals through different LinkedIn groups yeah. and some of the other applications make it a tremendously valuable resource to connect with folks who share similar interests or are of a potential market for you. So to build a LinkedIn profile, um, you'd essentially want your core business um, as part of that profile, but then you also want to create a group for your business. Right. Okay. There's many LinkedIn groups um, on the system, but many of them are ineffective because they're not really providing value. It mm. cannot be just another group where your potential clients and your friends and your family or business colleagues meet. They, right. need to bring, they need to extract some type of value out of being a part of that group. And that's where, that's where a lot of companies struggle. Now, now there's, there's something you said, Alia, that you need to bring something uh, to the table when you, you need to join any, any, whether it's a physical networking or online networking. Now, what, what, it, it's, it's how, how is it, it's, why is it so important uh, for a networker to, uh, to, to, to have a specific goal and, uh, and know what he's expecting from this um, um, you know, network in whichever environment you go to? Because for me, um, I might be maybe doing it the wrong way, but I only go to, to a place where I know I will benefit from something. There are people out there are the people I'm looking for. Um, I don't go to every single uh, networking uh, event that exists. You know, and I, I also I go there with a specific agenda and a goal. I've got some. I've got to have something I need to contribute to to um, to that event. But also, there's a lot of people. Sometimes I go there just because I've got nothing to contribute to that, but I need to learn from it. Now, what what would you say is the best um, angle with the best strategy? Uh, things. What would be the one, the, the few things you need to make sure you're aware of before you even go, before you get there? Okay. Uh, before you even get there, wow, okay. Well, it's obviously uh, very important that you do need to go with a strategic plan of attack. Right. Uh, it, it's good that you are going with goals. Most people do not go to networking events with goals. You could have those broader goals of what type of people you're looking to connect with, but mm -hmm. then on a, on a smaller scale, how many business cards am I taking and is it my goal to get rid of all of them? Right. Uh, and while it is very important to, to go with these goals in mind, I think it's even more important that you do go into every um, every conversation with someone with an open mind, in the sense that you do need to go into every opportunity looking to help others accomplish their goals, too. And, that, that is true. Uh, that a is misconception true. that a lot of young professionals and college students face with networking and a challenge that they face with networking is they feel that they're trying to network with business professionals that have three, five, ten, fifteen years more experience than they do. Yeah. Well, this person has so much more experience. Mm -hmm. What of value could I possibly bring to this person? Right. And you need to take a step back and realize that, you know, although they may have years and years of business experience, uh, they also have needs outside of the office. Absolutely. So you know, beyond. Uh, business type experience or business needs, you know, these folks could be recommending, um, could be recommending a restaurant, could be recommending a book, yeah, it could be recommending a recipe, yeah, and that that's a way of paying it forward. Absolutely, yes. 
Now, now, is, is there a difference between um, um, uh, different different types of networking? It, let's say, imagine I'm networking for business, I'm networking for social. I mean, is there a difference? And uh, and if there is, uh, first of all, is there a difference in between? Yeah, I mean, the, there is the social networking piece that differs from business networking. Uh, I believe business networking is more tied to your career goals. Right. Whereas the social networking may just be more related to connecting friends. Absolutely. Okay. I think now and nowadays with the social technology available and the internet technology available, um, a lot of professionals mix the two. <laughs> yeah, I was just about to say, yeah. It, it feels like you're doing two at the same time. Yes. And, you know, earlier in my career, I would have advised against that. Right. Mixing business with pleasure, but at the same time, if you're taking your core values, if you're taking your beliefs um, and your values into every single conversation that you have, right. then you know I don't I don't really see a problem with mixing business and pleasure or business networking with social networking. Okay, that's interesting. Um, so so basically, the the key is 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 to identify what the, your core beliefs and your values are. Uh, because really, that's that's what it comes down to, right? I would agree. Mm -hmm. Now that, that will likely dictate your success as a networker. That's very Part of it is your ability to go into relationships and um, help others first. Of course, making a good first impression is important. The introductory pitch is important. But having values as as an individual and core beliefs. Um, that you can bring to a networking relationship like integrity, honesty, following through, doing what you say that you're going to do. Yeah. These are the values behind networking that will um, essentially build your credibility as a business professional. Well, somebody, somebody said, said something, um, because, you, I, because I think you're absolutely right, but somebody said something, uh, which I use it in, in a lot of my, my training programs, and that show me the five people you spend the most time with. And if I get to know them, I'll know everything about you. How true is that? Because now you're using things of values and, 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 and beliefs and, and, and whatever. That's really kind of an influence with the people around you, too. Is that is that a true statement? Mm, yeah, I definitely think that there is some value to be said about the type of company that we keep. Mm -hmm. As it relates to networking, it's putting different. your successes in somebody or having your successes stated in someone else's words can be extremely powerful. And if I can just make point back to the LinkedIn yeah. website again, mm -hmm. you know, with so many people out of work right now and fighting for very few job positions, yeah. there's an application on the LinkedIn website to get recommended for your work. Okay. And these are the best, this is the best way for you to um, demonstrate and add power to your candidacy for any job is to get le recommended um, on the LinkedIn website. And in fact, professionals in Chicago are saying now that LinkedIn recommendations are an even powerful, more powerful marketing tool than your resume itself. Wow. Okay. That's the first time I, I've I've uh, I've had that. Okay. 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 That's so. 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 In in, in terms of. Uh, um, because now we, we, we're going back to the key scenario right now, the key issue, it uh, doesn't matter where you are in the part of the world today, it's really um, jobs. And people, not, not because of something new, because of the phenomenon of globalization that's really pulling, pushing things in a different direction that people all over the place are competing with different people because some of the work that I need to be done before I needed to employ or recruit somebody you know, in my local community, but most of the staff now have, I can recruit somebody uh, in, in China, in the U.S., and in, in, in Africa. So it's, so it's more co com competitive than it, than it used to be. But let's, let's, let's go back here and say, let's say I'm networking specifically for looking for a job. Okay. What, what are the, um, uh, because when I looked at your, 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 your website, I, I did some a little bit more research, um, you do coach people in networking. You do coach people in, 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 these, in these areas. How do you do it? I mean, run me through how would you, would you start with somebody and how would you help them to move from where they are to where they want to be in terms of 
getting themselves into back into the job market or knowing who where to go and how the best way to network. I think it's um, it's a very comprehensive process, but I'll try to keep it short and give yeah. you the uh, the macro version is as is, is easily as possible here. I essentially sit down with someone and first get a sense of what their current beliefs are about networking, what has been their experience with networking, and beyond that, what are they looking to get out of networking? And um, taking a, I take a closer look at their online presence. Right. And um, why is that so important? So, so to cut you that, why is the online presence is important? Because you have to worry about your credibility. Uh, a lot of the professionals who are in the job market have profiles online on, on different websites that would damage their credibility if an employer is going to go on and, and um, include this as part of their background search. Ah. Uh, but to take to you know, take a step forward. Uh, I also have to understand their beliefs about uh, relationship building because there's things that happen to us are oftentimes in childhood that affect our perceptions and the way we view relationships and relationship building. A lot of us have trust issues, and trust is a big part of networking. Right. So I'm having I, I'm having to understand and uncover some of these issues and then deal with them prior to um, sending this person out with arsenal to be able to network. Now, John, I need to, to, to take you back a little bit to make, give me one little comment, because this is actually a very key point. Uh, people might not be able to understand what you, what you meant. Um, when you say some relationships, uh, some, some the, your online presence can damage your credibility, Give me is there any example that you can give me if you are on this sort of site or in your profiles on this sort of area would affect you? Can you give me just one example for our viewers to get to understand exactly what you mean? Because these areas in some of these parts of the world, people don't even think like that. Okay. Uh, let's say that I'm the hiring manager for an insurance company and I'm getting ready to hire a young uh, insurance associate or an accounting associate to our group right out of college. Yeah. And, um, you know, we go through our usual background checks uh, for the company and, you know, coincidentally, um, I'm tagged in a photo on Facebook, and I'm also, you know, after I'm I'm tagged on this picture, I go online and take a look at the pictures in the album, and um, you know, here I see a picture of this this person that we're getting ready to hire doing something illegal in a picture. That's a good. Many That's employers good nowadays okay. look for reasons not to hire you rather than reasons to hire to you. Hire you. Yes. And nine out of ten times, a hiring manager is going to Google your name. Absolutely. Uh, so anytime your name is mentioned online, just need to be careful on where that is because it may cost you a job offer. Wow. So I strongly advise young professionals and, and students that have online profiles and presences, especially through Facebook and MySpace and some of these others, to keep your profiles professional. Okay, okay. okay, let's go back. You know, what he's just said is actually very important. People put stuff on Facebook, and, and they, but they don't really think about them. They just put images there. But also also get involved in different places and different people. And, and you might not post a picture, but you're right. Somebody else can post that picture and link you in. And then what you have is that um, you get, you, technically, you, you give um, somebody who's looking to hire you more reasons um, to not to hire you because what happens when I go to somebody's uh, Facebook page? What the first thing I do? I go to their pictures and take a look. Um, I do that all the time. I don't know why I do it, but I just do. <laughs> um, and you'd be amazed how many pictures you find there. And uh, you just actually made me now go and look at mine. What pictures do I have on my Facebook that really yeah. uh, give a different impression out there? But thank you. That's a very, very, very key point. Can 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 I, let's now carry on to where, what you were where you were making another point and then following up point. Sorry to to take you back because that but that really is going to be one of those things my audience is going to find very interesting, very exciting. Um, so I believe I had just been um, touching on my networking services a little bit. You know, yeah. we all have different um, skill gaps and strengths when it comes to networking that we're not even consciously aware of. Mm. So for some of my clients, it is having the confidence to go in to a networking event and um, having a, a positive net, 
networking conversation with folks at an event and um, framing that conversation so you can figure out by the end of the conversation if you can help this person, if they can help you, and whether or not this is a credible individual that you would even want to help. You know, because it's one thing to, to help another by um, sending them an article or referring them to a website or a resource, but if you're referring someone into a job or yep. you're referring them to another contact in mm -hmm. your network, mm -hmm. your name and credibility is on the line. So being a very good judge of character is also important with networking. That's something that I teach that I teach as well. But so you know that's that's part of the online or sorry that's part of um, the networking side of my business and coaching people in terms of events. But beyond that, setting up specific project plans for them to accomplish goals like getting referred into a job is what I offer. And just you know to give you a sense of what that process looks like, mm -hmm. sit down and create a list of companies or target people that we're looking to connect with, and then essentially connecting the dots through technology to determine how you can find these people and get to these people to establish genuine, mutually beneficial relationships, in turn, um, getting you referred into jobs within organizations. And there's you know a number of different approaches uh, that you can do this. Now, one one of the things I did I did find uh, on your site very interesting. You got some amazing tips in there that uh, that you know that really gives somebody you know something to work with. But but let me just understand what you mean by certain things. Because you said something like you know um, uh, be yourself um, when you try. I think this is the tip if you go for an interview, you have some tips there. But can you just clarify exactly what you mean by by when 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 you say those things? When you mean what be yourself, you know, personality, personality-wise, and if you're trying to get that job, and you know, what does that? What do you mean when you say be yourself? As it relates to the job search and mm -hmm. interviewing, mm -hmm. coming from a background in, in human resources and recruiting, I understand the process in that. By the time, um, as a candidate, as if you make it to an in-office interview, they'd whittle down the pool of candidates to a very small portion, and by the time you get to an office interview, they're fairly certain that you can probably do the job in terms of responsibilities. So you know, there may have been 300 applicants to the job, and they're bringing in three candidates mm -hmm. that look the best on paper. Personally, they don't know you then. They may have talked to you on the phone, but my point is, is by the time you get to an office interview, it's more or less a personality sell. Because they will hire on personality just as much as they will based on hard skills or, or skill sets that you bring to the table. So, I mean, they're essentially looking for someone who's going to be a good culture fit and personality fit for the team just as much as they're looking for someone to uh, physically get the job done. Okay. So that's why I say be yourself and um, show a little personality. So many of the clients that I interview – I mean, with a straight face, they've got an agenda, they need to sell themselves for the job, but they forget that smiling and nonverbal communication is an extremely powerful tool yes. in, the interviewing, uh, in the interviewing business. You also said something uh, to do with the don't ask that questions until you are clear um, say, of the idea of what you, you, know, you, you will say. I mean, uh, you know, can we clarify a couple of things uh, there, exactly what you mean? I'd be happy to, and that's uh, that's a big one. That's a big mistake that probably 60% of interviewees that I work with right. struggle to do. And what it is, Jeffrey, is that a lot of us are uncomfortable with the silence after we're asked a question, mm -hmm. yes. especially when the spotlight's on us. If we're in front of a group, if we're in a business setting, or if we're being interviewed and someone asks us a question, mm -hmm. we're not comfortable with that silence between the time that they ask us the question and we answer the question. So we go, you know, by nature we tend to jump right into an answer to begin talking rather than pausing and waiting to think what the best answer is. So essentially what you need to do on an interview or at any time is after you're asked a question, pause, think for a moment. It's okay to look down, it's okay to look away, but before you begin speaking again, look that person in the eye and um, deliver your answer. 
part of it is just becoming comfortable with that silence after you're asked a question before yeah. you answer. Because a lot of times you know, when we jump into an answer, and what I've seen with interviewing people is that they will not have a good idea of where they're going with the rest of their answer. You need to pause mid-sentence, look away, yeah. think about what, how they're going to answer the question or finish answering the question, and yeah. then look back at me in the eye. Or they tend to trail off in in terms of the second half of their sentence answering the question. So they'll begin strong with an answer, yeah. and then they're not sure where they're going to go because they jump right into an answer, and they just begin to trail off. Wow. wow. You know, it, it, it's hard to keep from not laughing in these people's faces because you cannot do that on a real interview. What pausing does and not speaking until you're ready to speak, it allows you not only to think about a clear answer of um, how you're going to answer the question, but giving you um, time to think of what that best answer is, and recalling it from memory. It's amazing how, how many people don't go through basic training when they're looking for one of the most important things in their lives, which is basically a job. They just, just go there and try to get it. But what, the things you're mentioning, they, they actually quite easily uh, can be overlooked, because as you're saying, I can just just about visualizing everything you're saying. Um, yeah. but, but you tell me, you also talk about how to tell um, uh, a story in two minutes. How do you do that? How can you tell a story in two minutes? You know, general rule is to keep any uh, interview answer to two minutes or less. But when I say be a strong storyteller, get into the details, get into the obstacles that you personally faced yeah. when telling the story. Mm -hmm. and the actions you took to justify or improve the situation and the overall result. Many times we're often asked on interviews, um, tell me about a difficult coworker you, you dealt with. Tell me about a difficult decision you had to make on the job. Um, and it, okay. Tell me about an experience that you had to deal with a difficult client. Any types of questions like this where we're required to sell ourselves or, sorry, tell, tell a story, is a great opportunity to sell ourselves and our candidacy. And it, it gives you an opportunity to show personality, like I was saying, but within two minutes. Yeah. The structure of the answers are, are source statements. Situation, obstacles, actions, results. 90% of people that I meet with that have not been professionally coached spend most of the time talking about the situation itself. Yeah. They spend maybe 20% of their answer on the back end talking about the obstacles, actions, and the results that they had taken. And they spent far too much time describing the situation. Um, and what they really need to emphasize is the obstacles that they had overcome yeah. and the actions that they had taken to improve the situation. That, 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 that's actually uh, very interesting. Now, now some of these uh, tips and, 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 and tricks, you do have them um, uh, on your website. Can you tell our viewers what your website is? I know we talk about it later on, but just, just in case other people listening that might be actually looking at what you have, what's your website again? The website is connectinginsights.net. Connectinginsights.net. Okay. And on the website, there is a free um, interactive networking self-assessment, and it gauges your potential uh, power as a networker. So it doesn't right. Really measure your networking abilities, but it more or less assesses whether or not you attain the um, the values behind networking that I previously mentioned, like doing what you say that you're going to do. And okay. Being a good judge of character. These are the true values behind networking. Now let's just um, um, and now I'll go a little bit further and just assume that somebody I'm ready. I've got an event taking place. Tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to. In, in London, we have a, we have lots of uh, uh, breakfast meetings, business meetings. Um, we got too many, and we got you know. Now we, we, we I'm talking about offline. I'm ready. I'm I'm going. How should I be prepared? I mean, uh, you talked about the uh, the intro, introductory um, elevator pitch. I mean, give us a bit of understanding. Give our listeners a bit of understanding. Why is that important? How do they get themselves prepared. You've got, you got some points there that you give um, uh, as tips. Just tell our, our listeners exactly what are these tips and, 
and how do they go about making sure they do things the right way. So you know those tips. I'm not going to mention them. You tell us exactly what they are. So we do agree that, you know, first impressions last a lifetime? A, a, a thousand percent. Absolutely. Right. Okay. Well, in making first impressions, people are going to make ten assumptions about us before we even speak yes. to them. So it's our posture. It's our facial expressions. It is our... Um, it is our attire, our dress, our hair. Yeah. So everything creates an impression on someone else before we say anything. So, you know, to be prepared going to an event, it's always, it, so it, let's say, for example, that you have an event tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, definitely need to have your hair groomed. Um, you definitely need to have a suit pressed. Yep. Rule of thumb is to always overdress and underdress um, because that okay. makes an impression on people, especially business networking events, mm -hmm. especially for students going to some of these events. I mean, I, I think that overdressing by one subconsciously gives us more confidence. Right, absolutely. Uh, but you always want to take a, a definite um, number of plenty of business cards so that you're able to meet as many people as possible, but... You know, just as a rule of thumb, you know, it's better to have one or two very strong or, or positive conversations with people than to have um, 20 conversations, walk away with 20 business cards, but you don't have a feeling that you can help someone or they can help you. That, that's actually very so, interesting because I think that's what was uh, uh, giving me a chance to ask you one of the important questions. How should you go about uh, networking? Because should you go, I mean, you just maybe you just answered it. Should I just focus on just, you know, um, talking to everyone, get as many business cards as possible, or should I really just concentrate if I build a rapport with, with, with John, I should just stick with John and get to know him a little bit more. But at what stage, where, where do I draw a line to stop and move on? Because it's also easy to, to carry on for the entire evening talking to one person. Yeah, it's it's a very good question. I think it's, it's most important um, to stay connected and, and truly get to know people that Either you can help or they can help you. Right. Okay. Uh, there isn't a certain number of minutes that you should spend. Certainly you can spend five minutes with everybody in the room, get everyone's business cards, and probably even develop enough rapport to solidify a second meeting or, um, you know, coffee. But at the same time, what's most important is for you to understand the needs of others in these networking conversations to determine whether or not you can help them. Many of us feel like we have to sell ourselves. You know, we have to present ourselves as someone credible. People like to hear their ideas and passions reflected in others. So more important than talking too much is being an effective listener. And that's why I coach folks to become an effective listener by asking the right questions. Hmm. Okay. Now, most of my listeners are obviously from overseas. I mean, they're not um, in the U.S. I mean, how do you coach um, your people? Is that a one-to-one -one or you do some coaching online or you do some coaching over the phone or how, how do most of your coaching um, uh, is done? Most of it is one-on-one, -on -one, okay. uh, face to face but I'm also beginning to coach through Skyping as well. And, and and the other question I was just going to ask because my with every every person I talk to in terms of interviewing uh, um, is is because they have some add value to add to my to my to my students uh, uh, if those some other students um, our database we have twenty thousand uh, people in our list and and what we do we we trying to um, not just to give them the information but we try to follow up with the existing information about what we just talked about. So do you, would you be able to, um, uh, do you have like a newsletter or, or, or information where people, our people can basically get to know more about what you have to, to provide other than go to your website because that's one website somebody can go there, they can do a self-assessment. Um, what else can, can you, um, do you have an autoresponder who can follow up into, you know, how can people keep in touch? Oh, yeah, I, I have an online group where with myself and a number of other professionals in my network are a part of, and we publish a lot of our work there. Okay. And recently, I've written two articles. One is Becoming a Pay It Forward Networker, 
and the other is the importance of self-awareness in networking. Okay, we find them with these articles. Connect with us on there, and um, you know, learn more information about becoming an effective networker and interviewer. Okay. Now, now these. Where can we find these these articles? Where is this network? Uh, this is on the LinkedIn website. LinkedIn website. Okay. Okay. And the name of the group is Connecting with Insights. Connecting with Insights. The name of my company is Connecting Insight, but the group is Connecting with Insights. Connecting with Insights. Okay. It's essentially a group of HR professionals, career management professionals, and job transitioners, young professionals that are looking to network, and it serves as a hub for them to exchange ideas. And um, job transitioners come and ask questions about networking. They ask questions about job transitions. And uh, this group was built on a solid foundation of experts in the, in the field of networking, human resources, and recruiting. And so with that foundation, you know, we invite others to come and ask questions and learn from us. Okay. A lot of the, a lot of the group members are, uh, they serve as, mentors in a program uh, that I'm a part of as well through one of the local universities in Chicago as well. Right. Is there any, um, uh, can you think of an impact, um, a big impact that has happened to you, you know, through this networking? I'm trying to come up with the power of networking because one time I met a gentleman, for instance, uh, we were we were actually uh, flying from uh, London uh, to Dubai and, and um, I was just, you know, I was laughing, and this gentleman just um, came to me and asked me, why he's so smiling about, you know, we've been delayed for half an hour, and, and he said to me, you know, this is what I do, and we started a conversation today. This gentleman is responsible for a lot of business, as uh, referred to me, purely because of, uh, you know, we started this particular conversation. Can you think of, uh, in, you, in your life, in your business life, you know, what has been the in- impact of, of networking through um, uh, so that our listener can basically get to understand the power of this thing because sometimes I'll explain it. Sure. You know, there's two different stories that I could share with you. I'm going to choose to share one mm-hmm. uh, for now, and yeah. that is, you know, I, when I started this business, I didn't have a whole lot of I didn't have a whole lot of educational background in finance, in marketing, in technology, but I knew that I had the people in my network that were willing to help me, and I knew that I had done enough good for others that I would, wouldn't would have trouble asking them for help. Yeah. And so essentially, when I decided to start this business, I, I took a look at my network and was able to build this business through graphic designers, through research assistants, uh, marketing, um, you know, technology. I was able to bis- build this business, a fully functioning business from scratch, just through the people in my network who were willing to help me. Fantastic. And, uh, you know, I've been able to build the business and, and have it become successful just through the other, just through myself and the people in my network as well. You know, I wasn't having to go out and, and find people. I already knew them. Fantastic. Well, when a job is lost and you don't have um, a network, yeah. you know, you're starting from scratch. If people out there know what you're doing, you know, it becomes a lot easier to, to go out and, and create opportunities. Just tell uh, my listeners exactly one more last time your website, and then we'll be able to ask you more questions next time because we're going to have a lot of questions who will be coming through, and we'll be asking you these questions. Tell us your website again. Connectinginsights.net. So it's connecting, C-O-N-N-E-C-T-I-N-G-I-N-S-I-G-H-T-S dot net. Sure okay. for networking. John, you've been fantastic. I just got to know you, I, and you've been such a pro. You decided to come on this interview. One thing I do, I promise you that there will be lots of questions. I put them together, I forward them to you, and if you're happy to answer those questions over the telephone again, um, over our conference call or over our radio, I'll be more than happy to do this again. I do appreciate that. Thank you so much for your time, and um, and 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 really anything else, we'll be able to get back to you. Um, with with is here is that we're doing a big event in Dubai in the next um, three months and we're building up to this particular event and um, so maybe I'll convince you to come over as well so let me go take care thanks so much for your time I'd love to thanks for having me Jeffrey take care bye bye bye.